The Hudson H9 versus the Steyr M9A1, let's check it out. Steyr out of Austria has always been a very innovative and forward-thinking company, even going back to the 1800s uh, with their straight pullback designs for their bolt-action rifles, the Steyr AUG, and then obviously the M9 series of pistols. And this is something that came around the 1990s, a very unique design, very low bore axis, the sights are very unique, I mean it just has a different look to it. Uh, one of the things that Steyr has is a patent on the chassis systems that go into a polymer pistol. And in fact, they even have a lawsuit right now against SIG for their P320. The Hudson came out with the H9. Uh, they wanted to incorporate the chassis system because that's really where firearms are going, it looks like. But the patents for the chassis system and a polymer frame pistol were held by Steyr. And so Hudson went with a steel frame and currently developing an aluminum frame as well. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring these two pistols to you today because there's a lot of similarities between these two and yet there are a lot of differences. Now I've recently done an exclusive full review of the Hudson H9 and it can be found on GetZone.com. I'll have a link down below in the description. Now obviously the low bore axis is one of the things that really brings these two pistols together but they're definitely both an unorthodox design, especially with the Hudson. Uh, with this low area right here that's uh, at the dust cover, your recoil spring actually rides really low. And that helps mitigate the recoil. It keeps the muzzle flat. And guys, I'll tell you, it, whether you buy one of these or not, you really need to experience the Hudson H9. Um, it is one of the flattest shooting handguns I've ever shot. And I really love it because I can get back on target very quickly. I can find that front sight immediately. And of course you see that it does have the 1911 style uh, grip. And so, and for me that has always been a more natural way to shoot. I learned on 1911, so that really helps. Uh, with the Steyr, you go really high up right here on the frame. And you can see how high that gets right up to the slide. And guys, I'll tell you, you know, there's a lot of great guns out there that have higher bore axis that people have been shooting for years. But as far as getting those second and third follow-up shots, it's really hard to beat. Now I want to make sure the guns aren't loaded. We're going to drop the magazine, check the chamber. Uh, the Hudson does have 15 round magazine and uh, they're really nice, excellent quality magazines. The Steyr, 17 rounds. Now it reads 15 rounds, but there's a plus two base plate. And so it kind of rides down a little bit lower, but this gives you 17 rounds. So you're getting a little more capacity with the Steyr. Another thing about the Hudson, and many of you already know, these are fairly expensive. Uh, in fact, the retail price on these is $1,147, uh, while the Steyr comes in at $575 retail. But you can typically buy a Steyr like this for around the $450, $475 range. I know Classic Firearms had these for about just a little over $450. Uh, the Hudson Typically, you can maybe find these for around the $1,000 range. That's a big hurdle for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you right up front, the Hudson shot flatter. I mean, part of that is because of the weight. Part of that is because of the recoil system. Uh, but it did shoot flatter. It was a little more easy to keep that front sight level. Uh, with the Steyr, though, it shoots really flat. And even during the shooting demonstration, it's difficult to tell the difference between the two. But in the hand, you've got lighter weight, and so that's definitely going to give you a little more muzzle flip than on the Hudson. We do have a 4-inch barrel with the Steyr. We have a 4.28-inch barrel 
on the Hudson. You have modular grips, and I believe these are micarta grips, but VZ makes G10 grips for the Hudson. Uh, these do not take your standard 1911 grips, but it does have the 1911 grip angle. And so it's a very natural pointing handgun. Uh, tell you a couple of things. When I grab this handgun and I bring it up with my eyes closed to the target, the front sight is typically right there on target with the Steyr, and it has some really different style sights, as you can see with the pyramids. Uh, now, I like these sights, but the way the grip angle is, it makes me bring the front sight up when I naturally point it. Now, that's a training thing. I mean, if I train with this, I'll be able to adjust and adapt that front sight to get it in the right position. And that's one of the things about when you buy a firearm, especially one for self-defense, is to train with that firearm and to be really proficient. The Hudson has black outline in the back and it has a Trigicon HD at the front. It's fairly large. This is a tritium sight. Uh, you can change these out with any MMP sights, so there's a lot of choices out on the market. Uh, with the Steyr, there are a number of choices out there. Uh, in fact, I think XS sights, True Glow, and others make sights for these. So if you don't like this triangular shape, which is different, uh, you can go with you know different styles to bring in that night sight, especially for a self-defense handgun. And I personally like tritium for a self-defense handgun, especially my bedside gun. Now on the Steyr though, you don't have any other grip options. You pretty much, you have what you have. But honestly guys, it is a very ergonomic handgun. It seems to melt into your hand. Uh, but again, from my natural point of aim, I seem to want to point the sight up. When I bring it up, it's typically above my rear sights. Another similarity between these two is this larger area on the Steyr, which you don't have on a lot of the other striker fire pistols. And so that's kind of reminiscent of what the Hudson has done here, even though the recoil spring really runs about right here. So it's not super low, but it definitely there's some things about the way this was designed to keep that muzzle low. On the Hudson, the serrations are real easy to grab, and you do have front cocking serrations, which you can do press checks. Uh, but it's got a lot of surface area, it's easy to grab, and these are very simple to, to grab hold of. On the Steyr, your serrations are a little bit more abbreviated. They're not quite as wide as they are on the Hudson, and then because mainly because you have this cutout right here in the slide. So that makes the slide a little less blocky, and really the grip, you can grab hold of these serrations without any trouble. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of front cocking serrations, but honestly guys, I've been <laughs> doing this for years, doing my press checks. You will notice that the trigger guard on the Hudson is narrow. I mean, it is really small, and that allows you to really get your hand up high on this grip. Uh, with the Steyr, you can see that it's a larger trigger guard, but this is going to allow for gloved hands, which I think you may have some trouble with the Hudson. Uh, but this gives you a little more of an area right here, and with that undercut, it kind of brings it up to where you get a very good grip, a high grip, on this pistol. But I'll tell you what, guys, you grab this Hudson, the way it feels, the balance, I mean, it is a solid feel to it. In fact, of course, this is an all-steel frame, but even then, because of the way this grip works, uh, it kind of defies physics, and it brings, it gives you a sense that this gun, the balance and everything, that it, it belies the weight of the handgun. Steyr M9, 1 pound, 10.8 ounces. The Hudson H9... Two pounds, 5.4 ounces. So that brings the Steyr in at 26.8 ounces and the Hudson at 37.4 ounces. You have a 10.4 ounce difference between the two. But from what I understand, the aluminum frame on the Hudson is going to drop this down about 8 ounces. So it's going to get really close between these two. Now one of the big reasons why we have a, such a big price difference is the Hudson, of course it is metal, it's machined, uh, but one of the big things is this company's just getting started out, and they're making uh, small production runs, and that's always more expensive. With the Steyr, uh, this company's been in business since the, at least the 1800s, so they have a proven track record, and they have high production facilities, and so and this is a very popular brand in Europe, especially. That's one of the things that's kind of funny about the Steyr to me is that it's been one of those pistols that's kind of just trugged along a little bit. Uh, but really with the new design that they've come out with, with the M9A1, 
uh, the reliability and everything else with the Steyr has really increased. So I really see that the Steyr is going to become more and more popular. Now one big thing is trigger. And one of the things about the Hudson, it's more like a 1911 trigger. It comes straight back instead of any kind of pivot. It does have the yokes that go on either side like your standard 1911. But you will notice that the trigger safety is in the opposite direction of most of your striker fire safety pistols. And it goes in the up position. And the, it was actually designed that way so you would take it more naturally just to pull it straight back. And so we're going to kind of check the trigger pull. There's just a touch of take up. You hit a wall and then a nice clean break. Uh, this is not a 1911 competition trigger, but it's definitely a really sweet trigger, especially for a striker fire pistol. Here with the Steyr M9, of course, you have your standard trigger safety. We have some take up right here. And it's kind of mushy, but it does have a nice clean break once you get past a little bit of that tension. Reset right there, real short. Yeah, that's a nice trigger, but it does have a little bit of mush. Reset on the Hudson, right there. <laughs> that, tri that reset is just incredible. And then a nice clean break. I mean, the Hudson definitely is far superior with its trigger. All right, let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Five pounds, 4.8 ounces. Five pounds, 7.1 ounces. Five pounds, five ounces. And the Steyr. Four pounds, 14.7 ounces. Four pounds, 5.5 ounces. Five pounds, 2.4 ounces. Inserting magazines, it's really nice. Has a bevel around the well. And it's a really slick fit. Uh, your magazine release right here able to get to it and really you can reach it even without adjusting your grip to get that out uh, i have kind of medium hands so even for me it's a little bit of a stretch but i can definitely do it if you have large hands it's going to be easy with the styre has an elongated mag release i'm not i'm gonna have to adjust my grip to get to it but as you can see uh, there's no real bevel there just a touch the corners are edged off but it's pretty simple to get it in of course, these magazine releases can be switched to the other side. Uh, the Hudson does have a slide stop on both sides, which the Steyr does not. One of the big things that I love about both of these pistols is they have very clean uh, controls. I mean, they're very low, and so it doesn't get in the way. Really, the only thing you have to be concerned about is a little bit of a slide stop here, and then a very abbreviated slide stop on the Steyr. But this does not impede when you're using the firearm it doesn't get in the way. I didn't have any trouble with the slide not locking back when I was shooting. We're gonna be shooting some 115 grain full metal jacket, Freedom Munitions. Get a 5% discount using Suit Zero Zero, on Freedom Munitions website. Now I've done separate reviews on each of these pistols. And so my main goal was really to find out how they compared as far as being flat shooting. Uh, with the low bore axis, with the way these, both of these pistols are designed really to mitigate recoil and to keep it low in the hand. Uh, one of the things, of course, that the Hudson has going for it is that it is an all-steel frame. So that gives you a little more heft to it. It's going to keep it, you know, the recoil down. And, of course, also with the recoil system, that definitely uh, aids the Hudson. And it was flatter shooting. Uh, but when it comes to the Steyr, there's some design features in the Steyr itself that make it more flat shooting. So obviously the Hudson shot flatter, but the Steyr hung right in there with it. And really compared to most other polymer frame pistols, the Steyr is one of the flattest shooting handguns that I've encountered. Both were uber reliable, had no problems whatsoever. Uh, one of the things about the Steyr, as I've mentioned, is the sights. Because of the way the grip angle is, I tend to, when I bring it up, that front sight is up high. And uh, with the Hudson, it was dead on. But I think, again, if you buy a Steyr, if you want to train with this and carry it, uh, it won't take long to get used to that grip angle. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market, and you get a 10% discount using Suit Zero Zero when you click the link down in the description. Now we're going to disassemble both firearms, mainly because I want you to see the chassis system. Uh, first thing you have to do with the Hudson is you push in this little button right here, and it really takes 
a little bit of doing to get it down. In fact, you probably need to take a punch and you'll hear it pop, just like that. Then you can bring your lever down. We're gonna have to release the striker and then we can pull the slide right off. You'll notice that the recoil spring is captive and it's really rides low in the frame. But one of the big things is this chassis system. And you can see that it, this is an entire chassis with the locking block all the way up here to the front. And then back here has really ample slide rails here at the rear and here at the front. Uh, and then you can actually take this, pull it out, pull out where you could have a frame mounted safety, which Hudson does offer. If you like frame mounted safeties, they'll actually send you the kit where you can change this out. But Hudson does not recommend that you take this chassis out. Now one of the things I do want to show you is that the chassis is serialized. And so this is actually, the chassis is the part of the gun. So theoretically, if they did offer an aluminum frame, you could just order the aluminum frame and just switch out your chassis and then you could have both. Uh, very similar to the SIG P320. One thing that I do want to note, though, is that this beaver tail looking right here, it's false. This is not a grip safety, and uh, it's actually built into the pistol. The back strap is also G10. It's not metal. You'll notice how long the tang comes down on the slide, and then we're just going to pull our barrel out. Here on the stire, we drop our magazine. Here on this side, you press down on this button, and then take your slide release, and it takes two hands to do it, and you just pull it down and around. This captures your takedown lever, and then we can pull the slide right off. Now, I had already activated the trigger, so you're going to need to disassemble the striker just like you do on the Hudson. Then we have our recoil spring, our barrel. Even though you have a fairly deep dust cover, the recoil spring still rides a little bit higher than it does on the Hudson, but it's still a really nice piece. I mean, look at the chassis on the Steyr. I mean, it's beautiful, very well finished. But one of the big things about the Steyr, and I'm surprised they didn't do this, uh, the serial number is in the frame itself. So this is not serialized. So you're not going to be able to take a standard frame and switch out your chassis. In fact, to remove the chassis to this little mark, you bring your lever here and you can actually pull this out and pull this frame all the way out once you depress this little lock right here. Uh, so it's pretty simple to bring out, but if you're not really going to be able to change your frame, uh, that would just be a cleaning thing. Reassembly, throw in your barrel, recoil spring and guide rod, bring it, bring it back on the frame, make sure that your takedown lever is in place. With the Hudson, we drop in our barrel, and what I like to do is take my frame and put it upside down. That way it ensures that the recoil spring is in the right position. Bring it back, engage my slide lock, bring my lever up, and then you need to press it until you hear a click. Just like that. One thing that the Steyr does offer is in 9 and 40 caliber. Uh, the Hudson at this point is only in 9 millimeter. Well, probably because this is a 1911 grip style, I'm thinking that we'll probably see a 45 at some point. With the low bore axis of both, you're going to get flat shooting. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. The Hudson's going to win because obviously it's just, again, heavier, and the recoil system is designed to keep that muzzle in a low position and easy follow-up shots. Again, though, it's heavy, and that's one of the things the Steyr has going for it is the polymer frame. It's really lightweight, easy to maneuver. Uh, when Hudson comes out with their aluminum frame, it's going to really be a a game changer and the price should be coming down as well. Um, hopefully one day Hudson can come in with a polymer frame uh, chassis system and that would really put Hudson on the map. But obviously price is a big deal. Uh, the Hudson H9 is running about you know $1147 full retail and you've got the Steyr M9A1 that's running retail $575 but you can get these for about the $450 range. Uh, so you know, it is a big difference. Quality-wise, the Hudson is definitely a refined pistol, and it exceeds the quality of the Steyr. But honestly, this Steyr is one of my favorite polymer-framed handguns. The way it shoots, I really love the sights, and um, just an excellent pistol in itself. And again, if you want to see the full review of the Hudson H9, 
Uh, you can go to GetZone.com. I'll have a link down below in the description. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. centuries <laughs> to shoot okay but the styre all about quality versus polymer quality wise on the firearm quality quality rise it really has a low slide to the frame and yelling with the steel frame 